Cornerback Aaron Scott Jr.'s top three finalists were the Oregon Ducks, the Michigan Wolverines, and the Ohio State Buckeyes. And as the perfect story would have it, his true top two suitors were Michigan and Ohio State, with Oregon and Dan Lanning's Duck squad coming in at a distant third. Aaron Scott Jr., in truth, was down to Michigan and Ohio State. There wasn't going to be any other choice. And as a Michigan fan myself, I love the -the off-the-field battles, whether it's with staffs over recruits, whether it's staff members like Brian Hartline and Mike Hart taking shots at each other, whether it's fans over Twitter or Instagram or even over my YouTube comments section. Michigan fans and Ohio State fans are the most dominant fan bases in my college football with Sam community. They're the most dominant by a mile, and I love it. The game is the greatest rivalry in sports history, and whether it's on-the-field performance, whether it's the 10-year war, whether it's in the 1990s with Gary Moeller and Lloyd Carr versus John Cooper, whether it's Jim Tressel riding the ship at Ohio State, whether it's Urban Meyer and versus Jim Harbaugh, and now Jim Harbaugh versus Ryan Day, no matter if it's a painful moment in history for Ohio State or for Michigan, and no matter how long that moment is, this rivalry is elite. And what Ohio State did today, I think, is impressive, because even though Aaron Scott Jr. is an in-state prospect, even though everyone, and by everyone I mean the experts and most fans that were Michigan or Ohio State fans— thought that Aaron Scott Jr. would be an Ohio State Buckeye, Michigan was making a push for him. Even Charles Woodson himself got on Twitter and was trying to get Aaron Scott Jr. to become a Michigan Wolverine. And Michigan, for the first time in a while, was finally getting commits and finally targeting players that Ohio State also wanted, and they were competing with the Buckeyes for these players. Bryce West is another example of this. Aaron Scott is an example of this. These are two corners who, of course, are going to, if nothing else changes, be Ohio State Buckeyes entering the 2024 season. But Jordan Marshall, a running back who had an Ohio State offer, Michigan got him. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, according to 24-7 Sports. He's the seventh best player in Ohio, according to 24-7 Sports Composite. He's the third best player in Ohio. Bryce West is the third best player, according to 24-7. According to Composite, he's the best player in the state. And Aaron Scott is top two, regardless if you use the composite or non-composite rankings provided by 24-7 Sports. Aaron Scott is a six-foot, 170-pound corner out of Springfield, Ohio, rated as a 96 by the top 24-7 rankings and the 34th best player in the country. And Tim Walton and Ryan Day got him. And him and Bryce West, if they're developed correctly, are going to be an intimidating cornerback duo at Ohio State. So impressive win for Ryan Day, for Jim Knowles, for Tim Walton, and for that whole staff because it really did come down to Michigan and Ohio State, and there were some late rumors and speculation pushing around that Aaron Scott could end up being a Michigan Wolverine. I know Hummus Hero, one of my um, Buckeye subscribers who really adds a lot to the channel through the comments section, was telling me that due to some things that happened on different um, Buckeye chat rooms and other things that he really did think that there was a good chance that Aaron Scott was going to become a Wolverine. So these are battles. It's not just that Ohio State's coming out and just, you know, breaking a two-by-four over Michigan's head, not just on the field, but on the recruiting trail as well. The game is actually a battle now, as we've seen with Michigan, in fact, doing the reverse and breaking a two-by-four over Ohio State for the past two seasons, and now they're finally beginning to battle on the recruiting trail. Not as equals, but it is a battle nonetheless. It's not just Michigan going after players that some would describe as Ohio State leftovers. 
So this is an impressive get. Aaron Scott Jr. is the 13th four-star of Ohio State's recruiting class, the 19th overall commit. And I think the Buckeyes have a really good chance of landing the number one recruiting class with his get and the fact that there are a ton of other five stars that are interested in Ohio State and that Ohio State will pick up. And for Michigan, as a Michigan fan, I can sit here and I can tell you that watching the live stream, it it did hurt a little bit seeing him pull the Buckeye gear out of the Michigan backpack, but it is what it is. And he's got to make the best decision that he can. His dad played for Ohio State. It was his dad's birthday. And looking at all these different things, Michigan still has players that they can go after. Is their board as big or as impressive as Ohio State's? No. But Michigan has the best strength and conditioning program in the Big Ten. And for the past two seasons, they've been the best program in the Big Ten, at least developmentally. And them and Ohio State are certainly the top two programs in the Big Ten. If you want to make an argument for one or the other to be number one and number two, fine by me, but it's clearly them is the big two. But we'll see what Penn State has to say about that this year and next year. Penn State's also recruiting very well, too. Ohio State is the number two recruiting class, Michigan is the number four recruiting class, and Penn State has the number five recruiting class. And in that same order, Ohio State's first in the Big Ten in average player rank per recruit, Michigan's second there, and Penn State is third. So clearly, this is just yet again goes to show there's obviously still a hierarchy when it comes to Big Ten recruiting with Ohio State far and away being that number one team, Michigan and Penn State being down there at two and or three, and they kind of flip and flop. In recent memory, I'd say it's actually been Penn State who's been the better recruiting program than Michigan has. And then far below that, you'd get like Nebraska, Wisconsin, Purdue, Michigan State, and these other schools. But what a big win for Ohio State. Steve Wiltfong had something to say about this, posted this article about 30 minutes ago. I'll link it down below. The top prospect in Ohio will play his college football in the home state as Springfield, Ohio, blue chip Aaron Scott announced his commitment to Ohio State on Sunday evening, choosing to suit up for head coach Ryan Day and his staff over Michigan and Oregon. Wilt Fong wrote many others, but really it was just over Michigan. It was a two-team race. The six foot 170 pounds Scott adds to the a Buckeye class that is ranked number two nationally. Scott said, just being from Ohio, knowing how much Love, I'm going to get there. They have a lot of Ohio players, Bryce West, for example. I feel he's not the main factor, but played a big part in my decision going there. Being able to play with him and bring Ohio State back. We build a special 24 class that can play right away, Scott also said. Day was heavily involved in Scott's recruitment, along with Ohio State cornerbacks coach Tim Walton, who is one of the better cornerbacks coaches in the country, in my opinion. Scott also strongly considered Oregon, don't know if that's exactly true, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, but said this came down to the Buckeyes and Wolverines, and Ohio State won out. Quote, I grew up watching them, my family loves them, being able to play for one of the national contending teams every year, it doesn't get better than that, and staying home. I feel like they get a lot of defensive backs to the draft, why not go to a school that gets your position to the draft every year? I make it, I feel... I feel it makes sense if it were to happen. Pardon me on that misquote. So, big get again for Ohio State, and absolutely, they have put a lot of defensive backs recently into the NFL. Defensive back has been a struggle for Ryan Day in 2020 and in 2022, but as I've already talked about in some of my videos about Ohio State football, and specifically a video on their defense, I think this defense is going to be lethal. This year, will it be the best in the Big Ten or nationally? I don't think so. But then again, we'll have to wait and see. Preseason projections are just that. But it's going to be Ohio State and it's going to be Michigan this year. And I think all of you who've watched this channel know that that is my opinion. And it's not just that way in general, but it's that way offensively and defensively. I think the Buckeyes and Wolverines, there's a chance that they have both the top two offenses and top two defenses 
in the Big Ten. They're returning tons of production. Ohio State recruits better, but Michigan returns more production and develops better, and those things even themselves out. And the game in Ann Arbor, November 25th, is going to be quite the battle. And until then, there are probably going to be some battles like this where Ohio State and Michigan occasionally are going to be possibly fighting for the same player. And let me just let you know that whether it's Bryce West, whether it's Aaron Scott Jr., if Michigan beats Ohio State again, some of those commits might reconsider their Michigan offers. Or the inverse is true. Maybe if Ohio State comes up to Ann Arbor, maybe Jordan Marshall reconsiders his offer, or Aaron Scott and Bryce West, they're just permanently cemented as future Ohio State true freshmen and as future Ohio State graduates when they go off to the NFL. Ohio State continues to pull away from the rest of the Big Ten in recruiting this year. That's what this commitment tells me. And with the fact that they have seven I think it's six or seven five stars. They're listed as warm towards, according to 24-7 Sports. No one in the Big Ten is catching up to them. They're going to have the number one recruiting class in the Big Ten. I'd say no matter what. There was a brief period where maybe Michigan looked like they could pull that off, but with Justin Scott committing to Ohio State and Bennett Warren likely is committing to Tennessee tomorrow, like, six foot three, I think, or six foot five, somewhere in there, 320 plus pound offensive tackle. It'd be a huge get for Michigan. Michigan does already have some very tall and big offensive linemen. They have a really good offensive lineman class this year, so that'd be a huge get for my Wolverines. But it looks like he's going to go to Tennessee. And then Michigan does have some high profile wide receivers that they're courting and that they could land commitments from. But overall, Michigan's recruiting class is much closer to being done, in my opinion, than Ohio State's is. But they'll probably flip some players as well, as I think Michigan and Ohio State are both going to have tremendously successful seasons. Once again, they're going to finish in the top four. More specifically, I think they're the two best teams in the country. Now, Michigan missed a critical commitment, but they still have plenty of opportunities. They do have a highly ranked five-star quarterback in the 2025 class, and this class already for Michigan is much more impressive than the 2023 recruiting classes, and seeing how Michigan, in my opinion, had the Big Ten's best transfer portal class, maybe they're taking an approach to where they want to recruit at a great level out of high school, but they're also not afraid to put their hand a few feet deep into the transfer portal pool. But we'll have to see, because with NIL and the transfer portal, recruiting is changing, and I don't think that change is even close to being finished. But the Buckeyes have a great shot of landing the number one recruiting class of the 2024 cycle. Let me tell you some of the recruits that are listed as warm toward the Buckeyes. There are plenty of them. Obviously, Aaron Scott is one of the highest ranked commits for Ohio State now. Jeremiah Smith, Mylon Graham, Justin Scott, Aaron Noland are some other high-profile players. In fact, Aaron Scott will be the fourth highest-ranked Buckeye commit. He, I think, is the 30, yeah, 34th best player according to 24-7 Sports. Aaron Noland's the 39th. So he'll be right in between Justin Scott and Aaron Noland by rankings with a 96 ranking. These are players, five stars, that are listed as warm toward the Buckeyes. Aiden Breland from Matter Day, a defensive lineman out of California, ranked as a 98 overall player, sixth best player in the country. K.J. Bolden, a safety from Buford, Georgia, 98 overall player yet again, 11th best in the nation. Dylan Stewart from Washington, D.C., another defensive lineman, and another 98 overall player ranked 13th nationally, according to Top 24-7. Brandon Baker, an offensive tackle, also out of Matter Day, Car- um, California, almost said Carolina, that was weird. 24th best player in the country, 98 overall player. Kobe Black, a cornerback from Waco, Texas, 98 overall player, 26th best player in the country. And two more 98 overall players in Edric Houston, an edge out of Buford, Georgia, and Dominic McKinley, another defensive lineman, but this time out of Lafayette, Louisiana, 31st best player in the country. So that right there 
seven five stars, seven five stars that Ohio State right now is listed as warm toward. And two of them have crystal balls to commit to the Buckeyes very soon. Two of them do. And those are Dylan Stewart and Edric Houston. Edric Houston is committing on August 22nd. Steve Wiltfong has crystal balled that he will commit to Ohio State. And Dylan Stewart doesn't have a commitment date set yet, but Steve Wiltfong and Brian Don have both put in crystal balls for him to eventually land with the Ohio State Buckeyes, where he took a visit on June 16th of 2023. So I think just looking at the fact that two with 100% confidence are projected to land with Ohio State, I imagine there will be a third, possibly fourth, that lands with this team. That puts Ohio State, they already have, they already have, I think, what is it, like four, four, three or four five-star commits already. Jeremiah Smith, Mylon Graham, Justin Scott, Aaron Nolan, depending on whether you look at top 24-7 or the composite is classified as a five-star. So that's anywhere from, I would say, probably five, six, or seven five-stars the Buckeyes will have by the end of the 2024 recruiting class, which will be very impressive. Ohio's top three high school players, according to top 24-7 rankings, look to join Ohio State entering the 2024 season. So while Michigan, um, Purdue even got a highly ranked safety out of Ohio, and Penn State, they have their 2024 quarterback as well. But while Michigan did get several players, many of whom I think are underrated, and Jordan Marshall, Ryan Day, and Ohio State staff wanted him, even though Michigan was able to get some players from Ohio, at the end of the day, the biggest and best blue chip prospects still went to Ohio State. So Ryan Day is doing a good job of keeping in-state prospects funneling into his university. The Buckeyes have two four-star cornerbacks in the 2024 recruiting class with Bryce West and Aaron Scott Jr., and as I've already mentioned, two five-stars are favored to commit to Ohio State. Again, those being Dylan Stewart and Edge, and Edric, Edric Houston Edge and Dylan Stewart, a defensive lineman. So number two overall class right now, 19 commits. Georgia is right now at number one with 25. They only have three five stars, 16 four stars. Ohio State, if they had the same amount of commits that Georgia did, and with the Buckeyes' same average player rank, which is a 93.34, they'd be neck and neck with the Georgia Bulldogs. And Georgia's recruiting class is much closer to being finished than Ohio State's. So we'll see if the Buckeyes can land the number one recruiting class this season or not. But tell me whether you think they can down in the comments section below. And thank you for watching this video about Ohio State recruiting and Aaron Scott Jr.'s commitment. I wish the kid best of luck. I hope that I hope and wished that he decided to commit to Michigan. You do never know because the game might be a game changer, no pun intended, for some of these commits to either Michigan or or Ohio State, who the university would love to have and welcome back as commits with open arms. But all in all, it's he's doing what he thinks is the best decision for him. And Ohio State has put kids in the draft. Michigan does too. Both have good defensive staffs, so I wish him the best of luck. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all around. Bye-bye.